Do you want to convert your Ford tractor to a 12 volt system? Maybe your tractor is like mine and it's still the original six volt system and it's starting to give you some trouble. Maybe the charging system isn't working or it's just inconvenient when the battery goes dead and then you have to jump it with something six volt rather than something 12 volt. So it'd be easier if your tractor is just 12 volt. It would also start faster and the headlights will be brighter if your tractor is 12 volt too. Those are reasons that people like to convert their tractor from the original six volt system to an updated 12 volt system. In this video, I'll go step by step through the process on this Ford 8N tractor. Now, if you're working on a different model of tractor, maybe you have a 9N or a 2N or even a Jubilee or a 600, the techniques won't be exactly the same, but you'll definitely gain some insight that will help you make that repair on your own tractor. Now, one word of caution is that there is a lot of danger when you're dealing with an electrical system on a tractor. So if you don't have electrical knowledge, you might not want to tackle this repair on your own. However, if you're mechanically inclined, you'll be able to follow along and make it that repair on your own tractor. One other thing I want to say is that we'll be using a one, one wire alternator on this conversion. Now there's many different ways to do a 12 volt conversion. I've seen lots of 12 volt conversions and many of them are different. But on this video, I'll show you how to do a one wire alternator conversion and that's a simple way that you can make that repair on your own. So the first thing that you need to do is to disconnect the ground battery terminal off of your battery so that there's no uh, accidental arcing and then remove the hood so that we can get into the systems of the tractor. I have my radiator cap and my grill off of the tractor. I also disconnected the uh, wires that connect to the headlights. On a Ford tractor, the gas tank stays with the hood, so it's a little heavier when we lift off. Be sure to remove the gas line so that it's all ready to come off in one piece. I have some help on the other end to help get this hood off. I have begun to remove the six volt wiring harness off of my tractor. You can see that uh, there was many wires up here connected to the dash as well as throughout the tractor. You can see my pile on the floor there, stuff I've already removed. You can see the voltage regulator down there, the resistor, there was a light switch that was up on the dash. All of those things need to be removed. Now we're gonna put a brand new 12 volt wiring harness on the tractor. So when you're removing, if you need to snip wires off to make that easier, go for it. There's no reason to save that old wiring harness for another project or anything, because you're gonna put brand new 12 volt wiring harness on the tractor. Also, I removed the toolbox off of my tractor that's right here underneath the dash, and it was just kind of clumsy to work around it. So it's a lot easier to just remove that so it's out of the way. Now, I want to talk about the generator up here. Again, there's wires that are attached to the generator, both on the top and the side. Uh, there's a bolt that holds it down at the bottom, and there's a belt around it. You can see that I already cut my belt. Uh, the belt was really tight. I don't think it was exactly the right belt for the tractor that the previous owner had on it. Uh, so we're going to, of course, put a brand new belt on there so it's okay to just cut it off rather than struggle with it. So the generator will pull off of there with the bolts removed. Now uh, we're ready to put the new wiring harness onto the tractor. This is the new 12 volt wiring harness that you can purchase from Steiner with uh, the other 12 volt parts that you purchase. And uh, in order to feed the harness through the loom here, I still have my old wires here and I taped my new harness on there. I also, there's this red wire here and I taped that closed or attached it to all one piece so that I can pull this wire through and that will help me feed the new wires through the loom. My wires are fed through my loom up here so that's all set to go. Next we're going to replace the ignition coil. The coil that's on the tractor is six volt and we need to put a 12 volt coil on. So I'm gonna snap that uh, bar off of there and then pull the old coil off. You can see that my gasket stayed on the coil, which is good. So now I'm ready to put the 12 volt coil on. These, uh, sometimes this prong will get moved during shipping. Before you put it on your tractor, make sure that it's straight. It doesn't need to be bent at all. It needs to be exactly straight. And also this prong right here, that needs to be bent up just how mine is. And that's another thing that can be bent and moved. So give that a quick inspection and then you're ready to drop it onto the tractor. Again, that gasket is still there. So you can drop it straight on. And I don't have mine on there properly. I might have just, nope. Thought maybe I had bent my prong doing that. Okay, so there it's on. And then this will just slide right over the top, just like that. Okay, 
Now we're ready to put this coil, this wire onto the coil. You can see with the attachment, the prong here for it. So I'm gonna take the bolt off. This is the red wire that goes to that. Also, when you purchase the wiring harness, it does come with uh, a label and a paper that will help you identify that too. But it's the red wire that goes onto the coil there. We'll tighten it up and then we're ready to put our new alternator on. The bottom bracket for my alternator is installed. You can see here that it's uh, sort of off-centered from where it hooks onto the tractor to where the alternator sets. That's so when you put the alternator up here, the belt from the water pulley is straight and runs straight. So uh, pay attention to that and make sure that you get your bracket on in the correct direction. So with that, I'm going to set my alternator here and put my bolt in. Oops. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna let that rest there because it's gonna hold that steady. And now I'm gonna talk to you about the bracket up here. You can see that this bracket is on the head bolts of the tractor. When you take your head bolts off and put the bracket in and then you put the bolts back on, make sure that you torque them back down to the specifications to match the specs for your tractor. And then this bracket, you bolt onto there. And this is adjustable. It'll go forward and back so that you can get the correct adjustment for your tractor with your alternator. So with that, I'm going to reach this up here. I'm going to make sure that my wire is out of the way. And then we'll attach this all together. Before I tighten this up all the way, I'm going to get my belt over there. So I have it tightened so that it's as close to the uh, manifold as it can be. And then you line your belt up and pull it over the alternator like so. You can see that it snapped onto there. And then notice back here that it's at the right spot. I've seen a lot of people put the belt over here instead of here and that's not where the belt runs. It does not run right here, it runs right there. So you can see that that's all lined up straight. Now I'm gonna loosen this up and back up the alternator a little bit to get the proper adjustment there. You can see that my alternator is all hooked up now. Everything is tight. I tightened this one down on the bottom, the bolt at the bottom last. After I had everything else tight, you can also see that my belt is tight as well. So with that, we're ready to put the wire on. This is a one wire alternator, so it's a really simple system. And the diode is already built into the alternator, which is nice. So we'll tighten this wire up and then we're ready to move back up to the front of the tractor to hook wires up up there. Notice here on my dash, I have all of my wires hooked up, so I'll talk over them with you. Here is my resistor. Your resistor is still important, even though you still have a 12 volt system. So uh, this red wire is on my resistor and it comes, the other end of it is on my coil. And then the other wire of my resistor is the second wire from the keyed ignition switch. You can see that traced around there. And then the first wire from the ignition switch comes up here to my amp meter. Also on that same side of my amp meter is this twisted yellow and black wire. The other end of this is on my alternator. And then lastly, this yellow wire on the other side of my amp meter goes down to my starter by the solenoid for the, to charge the battery. So that's hooked up there. Notice that my starter and my solenoid are still original. There's no need to change your starter or your solenoid. That can stay the same whether your system is six volt or 12 volt. Now we're ready to hook up the battery terminals, but first they have to be reversed. So on a six volt system, the positive terminal is ground. On a 12 volt system, the negative is ground. So it's important that you reverse those cables and make sure that your negative cable is ground. I'm gonna start the tractor, but first I'll turn the key on here and show you that the gauge works. You can see that it goes to the negative. That's good, it means the coil's working. Now with the tractor in neutral, I'm gonna start it up for you. And then I'll rev it up. And you can see the needle on the gauge shoot right up. Very good. You can see that our gauge is working properly. That's how it should work. If for some reason when you start your tractor up and test it and the needle is going the opposite direction of what it should, then you just need to reverse those wires on the back of your amp meter. You just got them uh, mixed up, so just turn those over. But ours is working the way that it should. Now I wanna talk to you about the lights. You can see down here that I installed a light switch. Uh, this has two positions. One 
position is just for the headlights and then the next position will turn on both the headlights and the rear work lights. So uh, you can see that I put new lights all together on my tractor. So it used to, it, previously it had some kind of poor looking light. They, they looked really bad. So I put on the original style light. These are from Steiner as well. If your tractor already has good headlights on it or uh, the original style, you can simply just replace the sealed beam to a 12 volt sealed beam instead of six volt. That's very important because if you left your six volt lights in there and turned your uh, headlights on, they would burn out eventually. So you definitely need to replace them to 12 volt and replace the headlights uh, if necessary and do the same with your rear work light as well. My 12 volt conversion is now complete. Everything has been switched over that was six volt before and now it's 12 volt. You can see how nicely the alternator fits onto the front of the tractor with the bracket. My gauges work properly, my headlights work. So everything is complete for the 12 volt conversion. I hope that this video is helpful to you when you update your tractor from a six volt system to a 12 volt system.